This is going to be the biggest hydroelectric project in the world, the Grand Inga Dam. And it's not being built by a developed country. Instead, it's being built by one of the poorest and most unstable countries in the world, the Democratic Republic of Congo, located deep in the heart of Central Africa. The project is supposed to cost an astonishing $80 billion, and it's going to be even bigger than the Three Gorges Dam in China. Once completed, it could generate over 40,000 megawatts of electricity, enough to power more than 30 million homes, making it the most powerful energy project ever attempted. But how do you build something this massive in a country facing poverty, conflict, and weak infrastructure? And who's bold enough to fund a project of this scale? This is the story of the Grand Inga Dam, and perhaps Africa's biggest gamble for energy. To understand just how massive this project really is, we need to look at the river and the geography where this dam is going to be built. This is the Congo River, stretching over 4,700 kilometers in distance, twisting and winding through rainforests, deep valleys, and several African nations. It's the second longest river in Africa and one of the most powerful rivers on Earth. For comparison, the Amazon is the world's largest river by volume, pushing an average of over 200,000 cubic meters of water per second. The Congo, despite being much shorter, still moves more than 41,000 cubic meters of water per second, making it the second largest river by flow in the world. It's also the deepest river in the world, with sections dropping over 220 meters, which is about the height of a 65-story building. But the real magic happens at one specific spot known as the Inga Falls. Here, the river drops 96 meters over just 15 kilometers, which is a lot of whitewater force, maybe even the highest in the world. It's not a classic waterfall, but rather a series of powerful rapids that release an enormous amount of energy. And what makes this site so perfect is its natural slope. Wide, narrow, steep, exactly the kind of geography engineers dream of for hydroelectric power. And it's no surprise that this spot has already been tapped before. Back in the 1970s and 80s, the Congolese government built Inga 1 and Inga 2, two hydroelectric dams right on this stretch of river. But decades later, both are mere shadows of what they used to be. Poor maintenance, political instability, and decades of neglect have left them barely functioning and now operate far below their original capacity. Yet, the raw power is still right there, rushing through the valley, waiting patiently for a predecessor to harness this energy. And that's exactly where the Grand Inga Dam comes in. The proposed plan was never about fixing the past. It was about imagining the future. Unlike traditional projects, the Grand Inga Dam isn't just a single dam. It's a whole series of them. It's a multi-phase mega-project designed to transform the Congo River into the world's most powerful source of hydropower. The plan includes several stages of development, beginning with Inga 3, and gradually expanding into a massive complex capable of generating over 40,000 megawatts of electricity. That's almost double the output of China's Three Gorges Dam. But the goal isn't just to power one nation. If fully completed, Grand Inga could supply electricity to homes, cities, and industries across the African continent, potentially reaching more than 30 million people. The project was also designed to export electricity far beyond the region. Long-distance transmission lines were planned to run south to South Africa, west toward Nigeria, north into the Sahel, and even across the Mediterranean into Europe. The idea was simple. One dam system built in the heart of Africa, supplying energy across borders and oceans. At different stages, the project attracted interest from major players. South Africa committed to importing electricity. China expressed interest in construction. And the African Union endorsed the vision. On paper, the Grand Inga Dam appeared to be more than just an infrastructure project. It looked like a blueprint for a new energy-connected Africa. Now let's talk about what makes this project truly special. The engineering. Because the Grand Inga Dam isn't just ambitious on paper, it's one of the most technically impressive hydropower concepts ever imagined. The core idea is to build a chain of eight dams and power stations that harness the natural energy of Inga Falls, 
Unlike most hydroelectric projects that rely on creating massive artificial reservoirs, Grand Inga takes advantage of a unique natural feature, a 96-meter river drop compressed into just 15 kilometers. This natural slope means less need for flooding land, lower relocation costs, and geography that already seems built for power generation. The first phase, known as Inga 3, aims to divert a portion of the Congo River into the Bundi Valley. Engineers plan to build a 200-meter-long dam at the valley's southern edge to create a reservoir. Alongside that, new infrastructure would be developed to channel water from the river into this system. Once operational, Inga 3 is expected to produce around 4,800 megawatts of electricity. Future phases would gradually expand this setup with the ultimate goal of reaching a total output of 40,000 megawatts. But as elegant as the plan sounds, the reality is anything but simple. Building this project means controlling one of the world's most powerful and unpredictable rivers. It means transporting massive quantities of concrete and steel through dense rainforest and rugged terrain, all while navigating political instability and weak infrastructure. It's the kind of challenge that excites engineers and terrifies investors. But as with many large-scale infrastructure projects, things haven't gone according to plan. The initial cost alone is estimated at over $80 billion, a massive sum for any country, let alone for one single country struggling with political instability, widespread corruption, and poor infrastructure. The Democratic Republic of Congo doesn't just face a funding gap, it also lacks the basic logistics roads, transmission lines, and a stable power grid needed to support a project of this scale. And over the years, potential partners including China, South Africa, or even the World Bank have expressed interest in backing the project only to later withdraw. The bureaucracy inside the country is a mess, with government agencies clashing over who controls what. So while Grand Inga has the power to light up Africa, it's still stuck in the dark trapped between what's possible and what's practical. On paper, the Grand Inga Dam is meant to light up Africa, but on the ground, the story feels very different. Much of the electricity isn't being directed to homes, schools, or local communities. It's primarily intended for large mining operations and foreign buyers. Billions are being invested in transmission lines that stretch across borders, while nearby villages still sit in the dark without a single working light bulb. But it's not just about who receives the power, it's also about what gets lost in the process. To build a dam of this scale, entire valleys would need to be flooded, wildlife habitats would be disrupted, local communities would be forced to relocate, Environmentalists warn that unique ecosystems may be destroyed and thousands of people displaced, often without consultation, without compensation, and without a plan for where they'll go. Then there's the issue of transparency. The DRC has long struggled with corruption, and many of the deals surrounding Grand Inga have taken place behind closed doors. The financial trail is murky, with little clarity on where the funding is coming from or where it's going. Meanwhile, the people who live closest to the river, the ones most affected by the project, have largely been excluded from the discussion. So the promise is power for millions, but the question remains, who actually benefits and who pays the price? The Grand Inga Dam has been called Africa's version of China's Three Gorges Dam, and in terms of scale, that checks out. It's going to be bigger, more powerful, and built on a river just as mighty. But the comparison starts to break when you look closer. The Three Gorges Dam was backed by one of the most powerful and centralized governments in the world, with the financial and political strength to see it through. In contrast, Grand Inga is being developed in a country facing deep-rooted instability, widespread poverty, and limited state capacity. It's a situation similar to Tajikistan's Rogan Dam, another project with massive potential. But despite its promise, Rogan faced delay after delay. That's the risk when mecha projects are built in fragile nations. No matter how big the dream is, if the foundation isn't stable, the whole thing risks collapsing before it even rises. But the dream of lighting up a continent is hard to ignore. The first real phase of Grand Inga, called Inga 3, was supposed to begin in 2020. But like everything else in this decades-long saga, it never left the drawing board. 
It's all just talk at the moment. Now, a new version of the plan is back on the table. A Chinese-Spanish consortium is trying to revive the dream with updated feasibility studies, new technical plans, and fresh billion-dollar projections. Meetings are being held, contracts are being debated, and once again, the promise of Grand Inga is back in the headlines. The President of the Democratic Republic of Congo is all in. At every summit and international forum, he calls Grand Inga the key to Africa's energy future. We have now recommitted ourselves to reviving the Grand Inga project. A flagship project that could place his country at the center of the global clean energy transition. But beyond the speeches and press releases, no one really knows if it'll ever happen. The funding remains uncertain. The timeline keeps shifting. And after all these years, the world is still waiting. Waiting to see whether this grand vision will finally turn into reality. But one thing is certain. Through all the plans, politics, and promises, the Congo River still flows. Unstoppable, untamed, and full of raw power. It's carved valleys for millions of years, fed forests, and shaped nations. And now it holds the potential to power half a continent. But having potential isn't real progress. The Grand Inga Dam could be remembered as the megastructure that lit up Africa or the one that never got built.